If technology can create a life-like dancing woman on a stage before a live audience using holographic projection, could it be they might use this technology not merely for entertainment, but in deceiving the world into embracing the Antichrist and his one world kingdom? What easier way could there be in uniting all peoples under one banner than to make them believe Jesus has returned and then presenting a false Jesus, the Antichrist, Satan himself? Indeed, there is another delusion this kind of technology could potentially create, resulting in a similar outcome of all nations accepting the New World Order. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. For the elite, the goal is to destroy all sovereign nations and assimilate all kindreds, peoples, and tongues into a fascist-style one-world government. In order to accomplish this, they must engineer the collapse of the world economy to replace it with a new system of economics. They must get all people to swear allegiance to this system, and Lucifer has devised a fiendish plan for determining those who are with them and those who are not. The question of how and why the United Nations is the crux of the great conspiracy to destroy the sovereignty of the United States and the enslavement of the American people within a UN one world dictatorship is a complete and unknown mystery to the vast majority of the American people. The reason for this unawareness of the frightening danger to our country and to the entire free world is simple. The masterminds behind this great conspiracy have absolute control of all of our mass communications media, especially television, the radio, the press, and Hollywood. The Pentagon and the White House have brazenly proclaimed that they have the right and the power to manage the news, to tell us not the truth, but what they want us to believe. They have seized that power on orders from their masters of the great conspiracy. And the objective is to brainwash the people into accepting the phony peace bait to transform the United States into an enslaved unit of the United Nations One World Government. The Antichrist is empowered also by the false prophet, and the Bible says of him. And he had power to give life to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the beast to be killed. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark of the beast, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him with understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred three score and six. and she was 40 years old. Her cousin, Varakwa, was a Roman Catholic and she came from a Roman Catholic convent. So we could say she was a Roman Catholic nun. She was super rich. She lived in a convent and she had um, the whole of the economy, basically, in her hand and she employed this young man, Mohammed, whom she then also married. Muhammad marched on Mecca in 630 AD, two years before he died and four years before Omar became Caliph. And the Quran was compiled in 650 AD 
And Muhammad, who couldn't write himself, had a scribe to write down what he saw and what he heard. And the Quran is different, apparently, from all other religious writings because it was a directly dictated point. So if we look at this tremendous rival religion, which in numbers equals Catholicism, what is its origin and why is it there? These are very important questions. This is a mighty, mighty religion. And millions of people make the pilgrimages to Mecca where they worship at the shrine. The lectures discussed that the Knights Templars had two aspects of their religion. The one was for the Goyim, for the uninitiated, and that, according to morals and dogma and all the, the testimonies relating to this issue, was Catholicism. So the outside world got Catholicism. The inner esoteric circle had Luciferism. That was what happened in Catholicism. Do you think it might be possible that exactly the same thing could be happening in the Islamic faith? That there is an inner circle and an outer circle? That the inner circle has one faith and the outer circle gets Goyam religion, the Islamic faith? And that controlling them both is a central organization which is seated where? Well, the Bible says that it is seated in Rome and nowhere else. The Bible says that the beast is Roman. It comes out of the Roman Empire and Islam does not come out of the Roman Empire. The controlling force in the Bible is Islam is the sickle moon and the star, the star within the sickle moon. Now, where does this symbol come from? And who is Allah? Well, let's go to uh, some interesting quotes, also from encyclopedias of religion and etc. Allah, he was the moon god who married the sun goddess. Together they produced three goddesses who were called the daughters of Allah. These three goddesses were called Alat, al Uzza, and Manat. The Encyclopedia of Religion mentions that Allah is a pre-Islamic name corresponding to the Babylonian Bel. Fascinating. So this is an ancient pagan religion and Bel or Baal is the deity. We read in Morals and Dogma, page 451, the Arabian word al debaran means the foremost or leading star, and it could only have been so named when it did precede or lead all others. The year then opened with the sun in Taurus and the multitude of ancient sculptures, both in Assyria and Egypt, wherein the bull appears with lunette or crescent horns and the disk of the sun between them, are direct illusions to important festivals of the first new moon of the year, and there was everywhere an annual celebration of the festival of the first new moon when the year opened with Sol, the sun, and Luna, the moon, in Taurus. And the symbol of Taurus is that one over there. The crescent and disc combined always represent the conjunctive sun and moon. That means basically the male-female here. over here. Adoration of the celestial cow, Mehet Veret, there's the all-seeing eye, uh, the eye of Osiris, here are the horns, there is the disc in the horns, and it also represented the plunging of the sun god into the womb of the mother to be born by Isis. So the horns are also a representation of the moon, the sickle moon. So in later religions, or from Babylon itself is Syrian style. There you have the half moon with a solar disk in it. And the same over here, enlarged. Note that this is Baal Hadad, the birth the same of thing, the Because the Pope is today the representative of the Babylonian religion. So Catholicism so uses the symbol of the half moon with the sun or the star in it. Why I'm taking you to this chapel is not only to show you the Marian idolatry, but to show you this stained glass window where they have the Islamic sign right there, and to disguise it, of course, they say New Orleans City Police. Now, what have the police got to do this with the place of worship? This religion existed before Islam, and the initiates of this religion 
as we saw in Morals and Dogma, were the insiders, like Oregon, for example, and the Bishop of Alexandria. These were the initiates who harbored the ancient religion. And they were Christian, so-called, but of course they were not Christian, they just propagated that for the Goyim, Catholicism. True Christianity they fought tooth and nail and tried to eradicate, and they tried to eradicate the Word of God, as we saw, by changing it.